Hi, welcome! In this video, I will show you how I make my leather floggers. They are actually handbag accessories, however, they can be used outside of leather accessories. Okay, this is the kind of leather that I like using, it's called French Sheep. Uh, these are the fish hooks, they are made of solid brass and made in America. And these are also uh, the second hardware that I need. This is a print that I have carved when I was in college and I still use it because I love it till this day. Um, it is linoleum carved. And this is the kind of paint that I will be using to print my leather. And I will be printing on the front and back side of my leather. And this is the roller that I have. I know it's tiny, but I've had this roller since the day I started working, uh, experimenting. So I have weird attachment issues to it, so I'm not, I'm not switching to a larger one or a better one. Um, so yeah, I'm using glass because uh, I don't want to make extra waste. Uh, so then I roll my roller on the paint on the glass and then put it on the linoleum print and then I will plop it on the leather uh, and make my first print. Now the first print doesn't always come out nice because, you know, it takes a moment. Um, however, I like the inconsistencies that the uneven printing does, makes, because I like variety in the kinds of patterns that I print and you will see me use other techniques to take that idea further. Um, so to print, it's like pretty straightforward. Uh, I like to roll some sort of glass uh, round object on the print so that all crevices touch the leather and there's no air pockets. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. Um, that's how I learned it. That's how I've been doing it ever since then. And I don't print the prints right next to each other, but I vary them like so. Uh, because, again, I like variation in the prints that I make. And sometimes I print on top of the other prints to, again, to get variation. Because at the end of the day, all these uh, huge, giant leather hide will be cut into pieces. Uh, so, more variety, better pleasing for the eye. Now that I've finished the front, printing the front side of the leather, I'm going to turn it back and then print it as well and then um, here's how I marked my leather and cut it into smaller pieces so that I can fringe them uh, with my fringer. My fringer have two blades uh, so I cut my leather small enough pieces that I can comfortably fringe and so they are two and a half inches long strips. Uh, the knife that I'm using is looks like a pizza cutter but it's made for fabric and leather. I should be using a cutting mat but I don't have one right now so I'm just using my wooden table which is bad for your tools but it's okay to do from time to time. Uh, that's what I say to myself to make myself feel better but it's bad for your tools to use them on wood. As you can see already my blade has one point that's dull so I have to like cut it with a scissor. But that's fine. Uh, your tools, they get older as you use them and then you, you just gotta curve around them as an artist and keep using them or buy new ones, which I can't right now. Anyways, uh, this is called the Fringer. It has two blades, you can put more blades, but I like having the control to do stuff. So I only put two blades and when I'm fringing something, I'm looking at three different points I mean, I'm looking in general where the leather is coming in, where the knives are sitting, and where the leather is going out. And I try to keep the flat piece of leather as flat as possible as it goes in and as it goes out. And <clears throat> there are many different ways you can achieve this by holding the leather in different ways. Uh, sometimes I like to wrap my thumb over the leather uh, so that uh, the leather just stands still because French sheep well if you have cut your leather on the wrong side uh, your leather will be super stretchy but if you have cut it on the right side it won't stretch as much because the grains are going to the opposite direction so you want to test that before you go but since I've been working with this this specific leather for such a long time I just know what side is the right side or the wrong side so I don't check anymore um, but yeah as you can see it's a straight, it's it's a long process. I mean, the whole start to finish. It took me nine hours of one day to make twenty 
of these, which was a labor of love, and I had so much fun doing it. I was listening to different kinds of podcasts and audiobooks, and at the end of like an hour, hour and a half, I fringed my whole stash, and um, and now I'm going to group them into groups of four and then fold them in the middle so that I can make uh, sections which I can put my fish hooks on. Um, we're nearing the end of the whole journey, but you know, it's again, it's a labor of love, it's a labor of precision. Leather work means precise work, so you gotta not that you gotta take your time, but you gotta take your care and put that into leather because when you make a mistake, you can't take it back. It's unlike fabric uh, where you have an extra edge. A half an inch for your seam line you don't have that kind of luxury in here so you want to be very precise and very careful um, now I'm going to take my uh, hardware flogger and make a hole for with my leather all owl uh, so that every single piece have a hole on it and then I will be using my hole puncher to make holes uh, on each individual leather. I either do one leather at a time uh, or two layers at a time uh, because if you try to do all of them at once the the hole punch just like kind of slides because leather is so fibrous in the middle that it when you apply pressure it just like goes sideways and that's why you gotta do it slowly but surely. Um, <clears throat> if you have a nice hole puncher which I don't right now I'm going to get one very soon uh, they age over time and they don't age that well <sighs> anyways so I have all of my holes I have my hardware in I have my fringes now it's the last step nearing the last step I have my last piece of hardware uh, this is like a tube that has a screw that goes in the middle of the tube so I just like stick that through uh, all the layers of leather uh, sometimes one by one sometimes all at once it just depends on the kind of hole that you made. I personally like to make my holes one size smaller than the uh, size of the hardware just because uh, the, th the tightness of the hardware and leather makes me feel like it's more sturdy and it is. Uh, so that's why I make a one size smaller hole in my leather. Uh, yeah, it does make pushing things in a little harder, however they just will not move like in the future uh, the hardware sits so tightly on the layers of leather that this leather is not going to move so it's not it's gonna age for years it's going to be good maybe like you can I mean these bags are made to be passed on to your children and like about like forever on because I they are so sturdy and they're so nicely made um, so uh, so this is the end step, uh, I pull, twist, squeeze the layers of leather just to make sure that everything is sitting nicely and then I look at the bottom of the fringe and cut the parts that I uh, that are just like not pleasing to the eye. Uh, I don't cut any impurities or imperfections, I just cut the ones that are thicker than the others. Uh, I don't know why, because like aesthetic beauty. Anyway, so that's how I make leather flogger. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and subscribe, like, share, follow me on Instagram, on TikTok, and TikTok. Okay. Bye, have a good day.